it was perfectly cultivated and combined into one album called My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, and it's my favorite album of all time. I put this as number two on my top 10 albums of the 2010s video. Uh, I said it in that video and I'll say it here again. This channel might not exist if I hadn't heard this album. And I don't mean that in like a morbid way. My favorite album of all time, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. I think this album is amazing and it's a 10 out of 10. I am feeling a strong five to a light six on this thing. <laughs> So I guess it's now time for me to settle that. Boopy do scoop. Hey everyone, it's me, Boy McTafto, everyone's favorite musical donkey. And it's time for another episode of Thefts. Any guesses of which album I'm covering today? Why is Kanye coming at me at full speed? Sir Kanye West. I mean, I mean, yay. A quite polarizing rapper to say the least. You either love him or hate him. But what about me? Uh, throughout, I'd say, 70% of my life, the only Kanye West song I knew was a Stronger. And I used to refer him as that one guy that blatantly copied Daft Punk. Because I didn't understand the concept of sampling back then. Yeah, I was a stupid kid. And even nowadays, my opinions of his music aren't very strong. I only heard three of his albums, The College Dropout, Late Registration and Donda. I reviewed Donda in this channel, so he probably is already familiar that my opinion of this album isn't very well, optimist. And for the two other ones, while I do like them well enough, they are far from being among my favorite albums ever. And from then, I'd say my favorite is Late Registration. So now taking all of that into consideration, it's time for me to listen to the one, the only, my beautiful dark twisted nipples. Or how I like to call it, but I'm about to listen to what's considered to be one of the best hip-hop albums of all time for the first time. What expectations do I have? Well... I don't really know to be honest, but I'm a bit intimidated by it, not gonna lie. Will I join Fantano's side, or everybody else's side? I'll only know the answer in an hour or two. BRB. Alright Kanye, give us three things that are hairy. Balls, balls, balls! I guess this is the point that I realize I have to cancel the video. Well, my message to Fantano is that I absolutely disagree with you. Get out of here, this album is fantastic. I was legit afraid of joining the Light Six gang. But to be fair, it couldn't be easier for me to like this record. And yes, it took the spot of Late Registration as my favorite Kanye record. Not only because it has some really good production and a really hooking tracklist, but also because to me, this is the Kanye album that most feels like only he could do it. Considering the massively bizarre background of this album, it makes perfect sense that the lyrics of this thing deal so heavily with the predicaments of fame and love and that it has such decadent sounding beats. It's an album that is moved by many feelings, be it grief, lust, passion, fear, and many others. But most importantly, it's one of those albums that serves as the true exposition of its artists. It's where Kanye most shows who he really is. And it's one record that takes us into a very vivid trip inside the psyche of Kanye Omari West. I mean, yay, gonna need to get used to that. To the shock of absolutely everyone watching this video, I'm still very new to Kanye's work. As I've mentioned, excluding this one, I only listened to three Kanye records. So there is still a whole lot of his material that I haven't listened yet. So I don't know if it's going to be my favorite Kanye album ever, or if it's the only one that is gonna make me feel so connected to Kanye's mind, but even if it is in fact the only one to do that, it's still valid. Because that's not an easy thing to do reproducing music, and Kanye did that formidably. Now it's time for me to share my thoughts on the songs of this record individually. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the track by track. There are many different kinds of album openers, some come in more shyly, others are more neutral. And then we have my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, that opens like, WHAT'S UP BITCHES?! The album opens up with Nicki Minaj reading an adaptation of the intro of a rewriting of Cinderella, in a British accent for some reason, that says that our preconceived notions were wrong, and that the real story is far harsher than what we know. That's to me a great way to open this album in specific, but it gets even better when enters the now classic CAN WE GET MUCH HIGHER chorus, which I was already familiar with, but I didn't know it sounded way better than I could have expected. That short line already got me so hyped for what was coming in the record, and boy, did it deliver. The beat is not only great, but Kanye's lyricism is really engaging, especially the fat booty Celine Dion line. That made me go, yep, yeah, that's definitely Kanye. So needless to say, 
fantastic album opener. Positive highlight for sure. And it got me real excited to see what's coming up next. Here we have some notable things to comment. One of my favorite beats of the record, a great chorus by my man Kid Cudi, Raekwon showing up in a very welcome verse, and that one eight line. Holy crap, that line hit me like a bus. I guess it's no mystery that it's a positive highlight to me. It's a song about social injustice handed in a way that only Kanye could do so. And that's possibly why this song is so special. Another song to list for its title. Power is one hell of a powerful song. Kanye spits bars like a bulldozer in this thing. He's going in for the kill, taking no prisoners on this thing. And the beat helps you lead the way with quantum precision. It almost makes it feel like Kanye was right about the whole VMA situation that was addressed in the second verse. Even though he wasn't. That man got speeched in Chris 200. My only real criticism in this track is that I personally wasn't a huge fan of how the King Crimson sample was handled. Sure, the 21st century schizoid man part sounds great, but the way the sex line was cut in the middle of the track really didn't please me. It sounded a bit choppy. I feel like that could be fixed with a little more reverb, or maybe with a fade out, or both, but that's something minor. I still really enjoyed the song, and it's another positive highlight here. 3 out of 3 so far. Not bad, yay. Not bad. This is one of the few songs of this record that I knew beforehand, and boy did I hate it, but in the context of the record, it made me have a better appreciation for it. I'm still not crazy for it, why do I think the horns of the beat are fun and all? The production of this track feels so maximist and messy, to the point that I never could really enjoy the song, mostly because of the drums, but not that I heard here. All the maximism makes sense. Considering the album's themes, it makes the song fit even more with the context of the record. But again, it's not one of my favorite songs of the record. It's still overwhelming to me, but at least now I learned to appreciate it. It's a great posse cut. The beat on the background is killer, and pretty much everyone does a great job here. Except for Jay-Z. He sounds real rigid here for some reason, and his verse doesn't leave a very large impression. But to compensate for that, we have Nicki's verse. Sweet Jesus. This verse is possibly the best thing Nicki has ever done in her entire career. She sounds so motivated and ravenous in here. Her flow is more hooking than a hook, and her energy is contagious. But of course, my dudes, we have to highlight the cheesecake line. When I heard the line for the first time, I was like, Wow! And that verse alone earns the song the positive highlights. I was already going to give it even if it wasn't there because I really like the song overall, but Nicki's verse is the crowning jewel here. Even though I like the song considerably, I'm not including it as one of the positive highlights, because the tracks that preceded it were way better. If this was in any of the other Kanye albums, it would possibly be a positive highlight, even if the lyrical themes match much more with this record. But in here, I feel like the other songs shine more than this one. Also, I don't like the flow of Kanye's opening line in here. I can't stop associating it with the Balls 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 meme for obvious reasons. But that's for sure not a step against this track. I still really enjoyed it, and the beat, again, is grandiose and makes Kanye feel like a demigod. And Hove's verse is better than the monster one. Not by a whole lot, but it is. And it's a quintessential song for the album. I'd rather it be here than not, and I'm glad Pasha T agrees. One of the most beloved songs of this record. And honestly, how couldn't I love it? Okay, I actually don't really care about the song. Don't get me wrong, it's definitely a good song, and I like it. The beat is pretty nice, Rick Ross has a Nicki Minaj on Monster moment here, even if it's lesser to me, and the little guitar lines are solid. I just think that Kanye's flow is average in here, in that I'm way more invested in the previous tracks. Of course, I get the appeal of this one, but to me, this track feels a little buried in comparison to all the other songs we've heard so far. And also, the song that is coming up next. One of the most beloved songs of this record, how couldn't I love it? Nah, I'm just messing with you, this thing is splendid. I... honestly can't say much about the song that hasn't already been said. It's Kanye West's Anton, the one song that really simplifies the man himself. And of course, this means that it's a positive highlight too. And how could it not be? The beat sent chills down anyone's spine. The hook is great. All the verses are stellar, and the outro feels like the credits roll of a blockbuster. But you already knew that. So, what is left for me to say? I guess this is not only the best track of the record, but also the best song on Kanye's discography. My favorite is Steel Diamonds from Sierra Leone, but technically speaking, this song deserves the number one spot. It's the Bohemian Rhapsody of rap. But everyone knows that too, damn it! It's hard to follow up a track like Runaway in the track list. That's why I feel like that would be a better suited song to be the closing track. But if we have to continue the record, Hell of a Life wouldn't exactly be the best pick, but it's still a song that I really like. 
a good bass chart beat is always a yes to me. And while it's not the best one I've heard, it's still really great. The chorus is one of my favorite ones of the record. And Kanye's flow is really amazing. And of course, I have to mention the hell of a lie detail. That is one of the nicest touches I've ever covered in the series. So with all of that combined, needless to say, another positive highlight to me. Damn, Kanye. I mean, yay. Shit. One of the saddest songs instrumentally talking in the record. Blame Yami is a great track. And it shows for the third time in this record a feature guest doing his best performance ever. First, it was Nicki. Then Rick Ross, and now John Legend, with one of the most captivating choruses of the record. And of course, I have to mention the lyrics here. They once again are intense. I've heard this song can be interpreted, either if he's making a metaphor about fame or straight up about a girl. But in my perspective, this song fits more with the girl scenery, since there are way more human actions than material ones. Of course, materialism still takes place, and the fame metaphor is still valid, but what shines more here to me is the other case. Oh yeah, it's a positive highlight too. Although I don't really care about the outro. I'll just skip that in later listens. Since these two tracks merge within each other, I'm going to be talking about them both at the same time, okay? Okay. So, this is how the album ends. Lost in the world and who will survive in America. Hmm. Kind of underwhelming, I gotta say. I like it. But I feel like that shouldn't have been the quote-unquote closing track of the record. At least talk about the Lost in the World part. Who Will Survive in America does a nice job with the Gil Scott Heron spoken word segment that is a look back in the concept of the entire album, but Lost in the World, in my taste, is the least interesting song of the record and it's not even close. I'm not saying this track is bad, because it is a good song. It's just that to me, it's a much more mid-track list song than anything else. I honestly feel like it should switch places with Runaway, with Who Will Survive in America interpolating with Runaway as well. Especially since I got a very strange song, song feeling from Runaway so it influences my opinion as well. In my view, it could have been a much more potent closing to the record. And most importantly for this review, it would have prevented me from naming Lost in the World the negative highlight of the record. Who will survive is still safe, though. I am feeling a strong 5 to a light 6 on this thing. Transition. Have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? <laughs> oh my god. My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy is one of the definitive and most daring pop rap albums of all time. All the songs are immaculate, and it more than lives up for its hype. Sure, there were some moments that didn't exactly please me, but a humongous chunk of it is so great that it more than makes up for it. And yes, I can officially say, this is not only my favorite Kanye album, but also the best album that I covered on Taft, and that's saying something, and it's also not my favorite album of 2010. But hey, it's close enough. And the score I give to this album is the biggest score I give to an album, not only in the series, but in the whole channel so far. 98% Yes, I really felt like removing those 2% was necessary. No, don't select the video because of that, please.